When I first started learning Go, I was pretty confused about pointers, not so much about how pointers worked or what they were, but more about when and why I should be using pointers. So in this video, I'm going to take you through some practical examples of when and why you should be using pointers. Okay, so let's first start off by understanding what pointers are. So let's pretend that this is a stick of memory. Now memory is very complicated, but you don't really need to know how memory works in order to understand pointers in Go. You just need to understand the very basics. So each one of these squares here is a block of memory. And each one of these blocks is going to have its own address. Now this address is going to be a hexadecimal number, just like this. And in each one of these blocks, we can store a variable. So let's say that in this block here, we store a variable called hello. Now this is just a string. Now there's two things that we can get out of this block. Either we can get this value here, hello, or we can get this address here. So if we wanted to get the address, and let's say that this is referenced by a, that is the variable name, and the value is hello. So to get the address, we would use this ampersand sign and we would say A. And that is going to return us this address here. And my arrow is back to front. Okay, so what happens if we wanted to get the value here of hello? Then, of course, we would just use an A. Okay, so now let's say that we have the block of memory here. And so we have this ampersand A, and we actually want to turn that into the value. Well, we can use this other syntax, and this other syntax is going to use the asterisk, and we can say A. So this asterisk A is going to dereference the pointer, and it's actually going to return the value here. Okay, so that's the basics of the syntax and what's happening when we use pointers. So the first reason that you might want to be using pointers is to pass a property by reference. So let's go have a look at an example of this. So in this basic program here, we're declaring a variable called a, and we're assigning this the value of hello. So we're going to print out a, and of course, on this line here, we're just going to get the value of hello. Then we're going to try modify a, and we're going to try turn it into this string that says modified, and then we're going to print a again. So you can already guess what is probably going to happen here. We're going to run go, main.go, and of course it doesn't change. So why is this not changing? Well, what we're doing here is we're going to print a, of course, that's just going to return hello. Then we're going to call this function modify a. We're going to create a new instance of a. Then we're going to assign the value to modified. And then we're just going to print a again. Now this value of a on line six here would in fact be modified. We can print that out. And you can see that that is modified. So this is the first reason as to why you might want to be using pointers. You might want to modify something inside of another function. So we can easily fix this by saying a is a pointer to a string. We're going to change the value of the block of memory that a is pointing to. And then down the bottom here, we need to say that we're going to pass in the memory address for a. So let's also print a up inside this block here. And then we're going to print A after we've done the modification. So you can see before it's hello. Inside mod string, we get this block of memory here. And then after the value is modified. So essentially what we're doing is we're saying, hey, modify string. Here's a block of memory or an address to a block of memory. Modify the value inside of that block. And then when we reference that again, the value is going to be different. So a really common place that you're going to see this pointer, so you can de So a really common place that you're going to see this is in HTTP handler functions. So you will notice that the response writer here is not a pointer. It's actually just a completely new value but the request here is a pointer to the request. Now, this really confused me when I first started learning Go because I didn't understand why one was a pointer and the other wasn't. Now, the reason that the request is a pointer is because we can modify things on the request. 
So let's say this handle func was actually a piece of middleware and we want to write something to the request. Let's say we want to write a new piece of data. Then we want that new piece of data to be available inside of every downstream handler. And if we don't use a pointer here, then it would only be available inside of this block here. So another really common use case for pointers is when we want to make a property optional. So let's have a look at these functions that we have here. Now this function is called can return nil, and this is going to return a pointer to a string. So we can return nil here in this function, but let's say we weren't returning a pointer to a string, we were just returning a string. Well, of course, now we can't return nil. So the reason for this is because when we return a pointer, we're returning a memory address, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a valid memory address, it can be nil. So let's say that can return nil doesn't return a pointer, it just returns a string. Another option here is to return the default value, so that would just be an empty string. Okay, so sometimes you're also going to see pointers to arrays of things. It doesn't necessarily have to be a string, it could be anything. So try to avoid doing this because it's sort of redundant. You don't want to return a pointer to an array. You can actually just return the empty array here. And I think that that makes a lot more sense than returning the pointer to an array. Okay, so this is a more practical example of when you would use this. So let's say we have a database call and that database call is inside of a function called get user by ID. Now that user may not exist. And so if it doesn't exist, we just want to return nil and we're also going to return nil for the error. So if we remove the pointer here, then we're gonna say that you can't return nil for the user. What you could do instead is return an empty user and that's going to be acceptable as well. Okay, so one caveat that I want to add to this is if you find yourself doing this, ask yourself if you really need to do this. Sometimes it's better to return the default value instead of nil for a function. And the reason for that is because you're then not going to reference nil pointers. So I can give you an example of this. Let's say that get user by ID is returning nil because we haven't found the user. Then we can say user is equal to get user get user by ID, and I'm just going to say one. And we also have an error here. And we can say that error is unused. Okay, so now let's print out our user.id. And let's run this and see what happens. Our program here is going to panic. The reason for that is because we've referenced a nil pointer here. User is nil, but we haven't checked to see if it is nil. So we need to say if user is not equal to nil, else now we can print this line down here. So if you are returning pointers to signify that something is optional, then make sure you're doing the check for nil. Otherwise, it's probably usually a good idea to just return an empty version of the struct. And you can see here, if we return this empty version of the struct, checking that whether this is nil or not is redundant now. Go is not going to let us do that. And so we can just remove that entire block there. Now, if we try to run this, we're just going to get the default value for an int, which is zero. So the last reason to use pointers is to save memory. So let's say that we had this large struct here. It's a struct and it has lots of properties on it. Not just these two, it has a hundred other properties on it. If we pass this large struct into a function, we're going to create a new instance of that large struct. So we're going to take up memory for double the size of this struct. Now instead, what we might want to do is just pass in a reference. So let's go back to our diagram and let's pretend in this block here, we have our large struct and we also have a memory address. And let's say this large struct here is 100 kilobytes. So if we pass our large struct into another object, we're going to take up another 100 kilobytes of space inside of our memory. But instead, if we just pass in the address here, we're only going to take up the amount of kilobytes that this or bytes that this address takes up. 
So these are the three main use cases for pointers. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a thumbs up and let me know what you want to learn about Go next. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.